Marla Oblock, a veteran, went with her friend Lisa to get a meal at a diner in their neighborhood. What she never expected was that she would be treated so rudely and inhumanly. In fact, she was practically thrown out of the diner. If only they had known what she would do to them the next day. Marla had served in Afghanistan, and her service had been one of dust, danger, and a strange sense of belonging. She had been back home for over three years, yet civilian life felt so weird and uncomfortable to her. Unlike the constant hum of activity in the army, her days at home stretched out long and quiet. The strict routines she had built during her deployment now felt out of place in the slow pace of her neighborhood. Marla was trying hard to find peace at home, so she spent her time outdoors at diners and parks. There she could read a book, watch people go by, or just sip a coffee. Being outside gave her a feeling of belonging she couldn't find at home. That day, she decided to explore a new diner with her friend Lisa. They had visited almost all the diners in town, so they wanted to try this one. Marla held the door open for Lisa as they stepped in. The sizzle of burgers on the grill filled the air. They looked around the room for a booth as they listened to the murmur of conversation. It seemed like a perfect spot for a relaxing lunch. It looked like a nice place, and Marla thought that maybe she would love to visit it more often. A waitress with a friendly smile approached their table with the menus. She was ready to take their orders with the notepad in her hand. Lisa quickly gave the order of two cheeseburgers, fries on the side, and a coffee for Marla. But before she could finish, a voice cut through the air, asking the waiter to hold on. Lisa looked up and saw a woman with a tight bun and a starched uniform beside them. It was the manager, and she had a funny-looking smile on her face. She told the waiter to head back into the kitchen and that she would take care of the orders. The waitress was clearly surprised, but she nodded and scurried away. Lisa turned to the manager and simply gave the woman a friendly smile, but Marla raised an eyebrow. Something did not seem right. The manager smiled back at Lisa and asked her what she would like in a sweet voice. Lisa repeated her order and said that she was ordering for two, her and Marla. However, the manager did not allow her to complete her sentence before cutting her off again. She gently told Lisa that she would only be taking one order for now. Her excuse was that they had to wait for the other tables. Lisa frowned in confusion. She and Marla were sitting together. Surely they could both order at the same time. Marla then spoke up and made her order herself. Cheeseburgers, fries on the side, and a cup of coffee. She and Lisa were sitting at the same table so there was no need to wait for another table. Marla said this with a smile even though she could clearly count more than four empty tables across the diner. But this time, the manager didn't return the smile. She took her eyes off Lisa and now looked directly at Marla for the first time since she came in. One could see that the manager's gaze lingered a bit longer on her skin. Marla felt a cold dread creep over her. She had seen this look before, and it was not a good one. The manager then looked back at Lisa and smiled again. She then said that she would be taking only Lisa's order. Now Lisa was getting pretty annoyed. What did they even mean? They both wanted to eat. But the manager did not seem to care. She told Lisa that the establishment had a policy of not serving certain customers. Certain customers, Marla said in surprise. What does that even mean? The manager leaned in and whispered to Marla that they didn't serve her kind here. The last two words hung heavy in the air, and they were laced with unmistakable prejudice. Marla gasped at the statement. The truth was undeniable. This was blatant racism staring at them right in the face as clear as day. It couldn't be real, could it? Not in this day and age. Lisa finally lost her cool. She slammed her hand on the table and shouted at the manager in anger. What kind of policy is that? It was a ridiculous one because they were just here for a meal. However, the manager was not moved one bit by Lisa's outburst. She simply shrugged and told the young lady that policy was policy. She couldn't serve everyone. Lisa, however, wasn't one to back down. Her initial confusion had turned into righteous anger. She shouted that this was a public restaurant. They had no right to refuse service based on appearances. The manager looked straight at Lisa, 
but this time her smile was gone and had been replaced by a cold, hard stare. She told Lisa firmly that she managed the establishment and she enforced the rules. If Lisa and Marla did not like it, they could as well leave. Marla, who had been calm all along, decided to intervene. But before she could speak, Lisa whipped out her phone. She said she was going to call the police and let them know about the discriminatory policy. The manager only scoffed and told her not to make a scene unless she wanted to piss off the other customers dining there. She turned to leave, but Lisa wasn't finished. She jumped in front of the manager and told her she would really call the cops if she did not apologize to Marla. By now, the confrontation was already causing a scene. The diner became quiet as the patrons turned their heads with curiosity to see what was going on. The threat of cops bursting into the diner hung heavy in the air, but instead of backing down, the manager straightened her uniform and squared her arms. She dared Lisa to go right ahead and see if the cops would care about a couple of troublemakers in a small diner. Marla was now pissed off. She had kept quiet as she was hoping to avoid a scene, but seeing Lisa harassed was unbearable. Just as she opened her mouth to confront the manager, a big man stood up from a nearby table and came towards them. He looked at Lisa and asked her why she was causing a ruckus. Why couldn't she let others enjoy their lunch in peace? Another patron chimed in and asked Lisa to keep it down. This was not the place for trouble. But before Lisa could respond, the manager told the diners that the two young ladies were causing a scene because they refused to follow the rules. A woman who was eating with her kids complained that the scene they were making was affecting their meals. If the young women did not want to leave, why not just throw them out already? A chorus of agreement rose from around the diner as everyone seemed to agree that Marla and Lisa should be thrown out. Marla watched in disbelief as the patrons who were simply enjoying their meals moments ago had now turned against them. She felt anger, but it was quickly overshadowed by a wave of disappointment. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. The big man nodded curtly at the manager and turned his attention to Lisa and Marla. He told them that they had heard the lady. It was best if they both were on their way if they did not want any trouble. His words were a clear message. They weren't welcome here. But Marla was way past calming down. She was not one to back down from a fight, so she was ready for anything. She stared the big man down, waiting to see what he would do. From there, the hostility only intensified. The burly man puffed out his chest and got even closer to Marla. We don't want your kind here, he repeated. Then the situation escalated quickly. The man shoved Marla, sending her stumbling back. Marla angrily retaliated with a push of her own. That was when all hell broke loose. More patrons joined the commotion as they tried to force Marla and Lisa out of the diner. With nowhere else to turn, Lisa pulled out her phone again. She was going to call the police and she meant it this time. With trembling hands, she dialed the number and explained the situation. It felt like an eternity, but soon enough they heard the sirens wailing in the distance. Justice was coming. Two police officers walked in and their presence momentarily silenced the commotion. Lisa and Marla recounted what had happened, including the manager's racism and the patron's aggression. But to their utter disbelief, the officers seemed completely disinterested. They exchanged amused glances with the patrons and were even cracking jokes with the staff. Even worse, they seemed to be listening to Marla and Lisa with bored indifference. No questions were asked and no statements were taken. It was as if their complaints meant nothing. One of the officers finally spoke with a hint of annoyance in his voice. He told them that it was a private business, so the manager could refuse service to anyone they wanted. The cops bid them good night and went on their way. Marla was both disappointed and frustrated. They had been victims of blatant racism. If the very people sworn to uphold the law turned a blind eye, the cops were really going to let this blatant discrimination slide. The anger simmering inside Marla now threatened to boil over. Marla knew then that expecting justice from the authorities was foolish. She felt such shame and anger. She was a woman who had served her country, and now she was being treated like a criminal for the color of her skin. She turned to leave the diner with her head held high, despite the sting of rejection. 
But as she walked past the counter, someone said something that shook her to the bone. Don't come back, you monkey, a man said with a hateful voice. Marla flinched as the insult opened a fresh wound in her already battered spirit. But amidst the anger and humiliation, Marla was defiant. She wouldn't let them win. They may have denied her a meal, but they couldn't break her spirit. This wasn't over. She wouldn't let them silence her, and they wouldn't get away with this. Marla knew that she would return to that diner, but not for a meal. Marla's anger was still boiling as she walked away from the diner. Memories of her past encounters with racism flooded her mind, and it took her back to her childhood. When she was 10, her family had moved into a mostly white neighborhood, and it felt like stepping into a different world. While most of the kids there played with her, the adults seemed to view her family with suspicion. There were always looks of disapproval and the feeling that they never truly belonged. Whispers followed them and opportunities often felt out of reach. It all came to a head when her father, who was a hard-working handyman, was accused of robbing an elderly woman he was fixing up for. This false accusation completely shattered their world. Everyone pointed fingers at their family, leaving Marla and her mother feeling isolated and afraid. Marla's father was thrown in jail, and her mother passed away in sorrow after a year. With her parents gone too soon, Marla bounced between her aunts. The weight of responsibility settled on her young shoulders early. After high school, she joined the army, which became the turning point in her life. She served in Afghanistan, and there Marla found the sense of acceptance she had never experienced before. She and her fellow soldiers were a team bound by a shared purpose and a deep respect for each other. No matter their background or skin color, they were all soldiers facing danger together. Marla thrived in that atmosphere, and her skills and bravery earned the respect of her fellow soldiers. For the first time, she felt like she truly belonged. But returning home, Marla found herself back in a world where her sacrifices seemed to count for nothing. The diner's blatant racism was a harsh reminder that the fight for equality wasn't over. This wasn't the welcome she envisioned after putting her life on the line for her country. Yet unlike the scared child she once was, Marla now carried the strength and resilience she had gained in the army. She wouldn't let this incident break her. This time, she wouldn't walk away. By the next day, determination had replaced the hurt in Marla's eyes. She wouldn't let the injustice stand. But revenge wasn't the answer. She needed a plan. So she dressed in a simple t-shirt and fatigues and marched back to the diner with Lisa by her side. Lisa was still fuming about the previous day's events, and she expected Marla to unleash her anger at the staff, or perhaps even use her fists a little. Yet as they got to the door, Lisa became hesitant. She wanted to deal with the bigots, but she did not want her friend to end up in trouble. So she asked Marla if she was sure about it. Maybe they should just report it. But Marla calmed her with a reassuring smile. She told Lisa not to worry. She had a plan and she was going to surprise her. The young woman pushed open the door and saw that the diner was bustling with lunchtime activity. The group of patrons from yesterday recognized them instantly. As soon as they did, they stopped their conversation and looked at Marla and Lisa with anger. The manager spotted them and smiled. She was no doubt expecting a replay of yesterday. Marla ignored the manager and walked towards the center of the diner. Lisa followed close behind, though she was curious about Marla's unexpected calmness. Then Marla stopped at the center of the diner in front of all the customers, many of whom were present yesterday. Lisa, sensing Marla had a plan, held her tongue, waiting to see what would unfold. Marla took a deep breath and addressed the crowd directly. She reminded them that yesterday she was refused service in this very spot, and the reason she was told was because of the color of her skin. The crowd began to murmur. Some patrons looked down at their shoes while the others exchanged nervous glances. Marla continued and told them that she had served the country for nine years. As she continued talking, she bent over and did this. She slowly rolled up the left leg of her camouflage pants. When she pulled it up, everyone gasped in shock. There was a horrific scar on Marla's leg that ran from her knee almost to her ankle. 
It was a physical reminder of the sacrifices she had made. She explained to them that the scar was from a landmine she stepped on while fighting for their country. She was fighting for them. The scar was a badge of honor. Then she asked them, Did I ever ask for a thank you after my legs were almost blown off? Of course, the answer was no. All she wanted was to come home and be treated with the same respect she fought for. So she found it truly disgusting that she was discriminated against and refused service after all her sacrifices. Shame washed over the faces of the patrons. The manager, who had been smirking moments ago, now looked pale and speechless. Marla didn't need to say another word. The scar on her leg spoke volumes. The patrons who had been hostile just moments ago stared at the scar with a mixture of shock and shame. The lively chatter that filled the diner earlier had been replaced by a tense silence. The burly man who had shoved Lisa the previous day was the first to speak. He felt so ashamed. He apologized for his wrongs. He had lost a brother in Iraq, and he was disgusted to have treated a veteran badly. One by one, the others followed suit. The man who had called Marla a monkey even mumbled a choked apology. The hostility had evaporated, and it was replaced by a deep sense of guilt. They had treated a human being badly, and in doing so, they disrespected a hero. Marla met their apologies with a calm nod. Words weren't enough to erase the sting of their actions, but seeing their remorse brought her peace. However, the manager remained unmoved. Her prejudice seemed to run deep. She looked at Marla and told her that she did not care if she was a soldier or not. This was her business, and she was not welcome here. Lisa was disgusted. She stepped forward and told the manager that veteran or not, Marla had the right to be treated with basic decency. What about the right not to be discriminated against? The manager still did not care. She wanted Marla gone. Marla watched as Lisa pulled out her phone. She told the manager not to worry. Soon everyone would know how her place treats veterans. With a few taps, Lisa uploaded the video she had secretly recorded on her phone the previous day. It captured the entire incident from the manager's refusal of service to the patron's hostility. Within minutes, the video went viral and social media erupted in outrage. People were shocked by the manager's blatant racism and disrespect for veterans. They condemned the diner's behavior and called it a disgrace to the community and an insult to servicemen. But they praised Marla's courage and Lisa's steadfastness. The backlash was swift and brutal. Angry comments flooded the diner's social media pages, and calls poured in demanding a public apology. News channels picked up the story, and the diner's name splashed across headlines. This further fueled the public outcry. Local businesses severed ties with the restaurant and the health department launched an investigation. The pressure became too much, and the consequences were swift. The diner's owner, after being bombarded with negative publicity, was forced to take action. The manager and her staff were all fired, and she was sued by many civil rights organizations. The staff were replaced by people who understood the value of respect and inclusion. A few weeks later, Marla received a public apology from the diner's owner, along with a hefty donation to a veteran's charity. But more importantly, she received something she had craved for years, a sense of belonging and acceptance within her own community. The incident made people pay serious attention to prejudice and discrimination, and it seemed like they now wanted it gone. Two weeks later, Marla sat at a table at a diner with Lisa. This time they had been welcomed with open arms. Marla couldn't help but feel a newfound sense of hope. Maybe, just maybe, things were changing. Uh, what do you think about the story? Share your thoughts in the comments.